Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing well as usual. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm doing another video of my existing CD collection, but it's a little bit different. We're back to another episode of ranking discographies. So that's when I talk about the entire discography of a particular band and I place them in order in terms of how I like them. So remember, I've done a couple of these before, you know, for Enthroned, Dark Funeral and other bands. So as always, it's my list, so if you disagree with it, that's fine. Tell me your ranking of the albums. But anyway, before we get into those details, let's mention the band. So the band I'm going to talk about today, the one I'm up to in my alphabet, is Dissection. So legendary Swedish band, need no introduction probably, but if you're unfamiliar, they are considered a legendary black death metal band, or this genre which is known as blackened death metal. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it's sort of... As the name suggests, it's taking influences from both black and death metal. So Dissection definitely had their own style um, and really formulated a style because other bands cloned them and copied them after that. But essentially, the black metal aspect, it's very fast with a lot of blast beats um, and there's raspy vocals. That's the black metal aspect and also the lyrics being of a satanic nature. And then in terms of death metal, it's not like brutal death metal, but more taking influence from uh, melodic death metal, like a lot of those Swedish bands championed. No surprise that Dissection is also Swedish, you know, so from that Gothenburg scene. So it's like a blending of those elements. So the death metal aspect is more the uh, melodic element. And also Dissection took a lot of influence from heavy metal music in general, like Metallica and Iron Maiden. You definitely hear that Swedish sound and melody in their music. So, uh, yeah. Um, they also have quite a controversial history. They're not around anymore after uh, lead vocalist, guitarist, and band leader John Nerdvite committed suicide in 2006. And they had a controversial history before that. So I'm not going to give you a history lesson today. If you're interested in that, you can look it up on Wikipedia, Google it. But I will mention the history as it's incidental to these albums. So, yeah, the interesting thing about Dissection is they only have had three albums, but they were all groundbreaking and really interesting. So the ranking aspect might be, you might think, oh, it's predictable, only three albums, but I'm no mathematician, but there's six possible ways they could be arranged. So yeah, just wait and see. Once again, though, it's my opinion about these albums. So uh, if you disagree with the ranking, that's fine. Um, before we get into the actual albums, I'm going to talk about another one of their releases, which was not a studio album. This is Dissection with The Past Is Alive. So very iconic cover there. You've got this back. This is a digi pack. I bought this a long time ago. Yeah, cool. And um, this is an official release. It's basically um, a re-release of some of the dev demos they recorded prior to their first album, the debut album being the Somber Lane. So most of the tracks on this are off that. And um, there's a little history about it. If I go to the booklet, basically, uh, Typhon from Necropolis Records, he explains how this release came to be. Basically, um, Necropolis and Typhon were interested in re-releasing re the demos after the band had just released the Somber Lane, but they thought it's a bit too early now, so we'll wait until they've got a couple of albums under their belt before they gain recognition before we release these demos. So once they had released their second album, Storm, Storm of the Lights Bane, that's when the label decided to put this out. So, yeah. And there's a little segment here from the band where they explain it. Yep, so hopefully I can read this. Ah, no, in this light it's actually too bad. Don't worry, I can read English. But basically they were saying, yeah, they waited a long time to put this re-release of demos out, but finally they've been unleashed upon the world. So, yeah. Um, as I said, most of the songs here were featured on their first album, Storm of the Lights Bane. So all legendary songs that most people know. So you've got Shadows Over a Lost Kingdom, Frozen, Feathers Fell, uh, Mistress of the Bleeding Sorrow, In the Cold Winds of Nowhere, Into Infinite Obscurity. Yep, so all of those were featured on the Somber Lane, I believe. And then there's a couple of additional songs which they you know, hadn't been released before. So Son of the Morning and The Pall of the Mist. And then a couple of bonus tracks from um, John's previous band, Satanized, which also featured another member, Tobias. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is just um, basically the raw demo versions of songs that went on to be on the Somber Lane. Um, if, if you, I'm not going to go into the detail of these songs now because that will interfere with the ranking. But basically, they're raw versions with this um, demo recording. And um, 
it really does invoke a dark atmosphere because as, as is often the case demos often sound more primitive but at the same time darker and more brutal on uh, a number of occasions and that's certainly the case with this so if you like the album the somber lane let's face it who doesn't if you're a fan of dissection anyway yeah you will love these demo recordings because they're just rawer and darker especially that song um the first song shadows over a lost kingdom you know that breakdown after i will rain once again it's just so dark it gives me the gives me the chills it's great so um yeah and this album so even though it's a demo surprisingly the sound is very heavy and chunky perhaps more than the actual sombling recording so really excellent stuff if you haven't heard them before, I would recommend listening to the studio albums first, including the Somber Lane, and then go back to this, but it's an excellent release. Don't be turned off by the fact that demos can sometimes sound hard to hear. This is excellent. It really is. So, dissection with The Past is Alive, The Early Mischief. That's the full title. So, yep, you've just got the back cover here, and um, Digipack here. This was back in the 90s. Nice disc as well. And then the booklet, where it's got the history of this release, pictures of the band, and all of the lyrics, interestingly. So that's, that's interesting. Considering that they were re-released on the Somberlane. But yeah, really cool pictures. Yeah, definitely. And then a little biography about Satanized, the pre-dissection band. But yeah, if, if you're a fan of dissection, yeah, definitely pick this up or check it out if you haven't heard it, because it's really good. And get this back in the cover yep so the legendary demo re-recordings this is dissection with the past is alive the early mischief okay so now into the album ranking guys so remember everyone has their own opinion about it this is going to shock a lot of people my choices maybe because there are popular opinions about bands but remember it is my list um, I will say this before I go into the rankings, just because one is third doesn't mean I dislike it. For the record, I love all of Dissection's albums, but there's, it's just a case of putting them in order, hence the term ranking. All right, so coming in at number three, in my opinion for Dissection, we have The Somber Lane. Oh, shock, horror. I can imagine people's typewriters going, tick, 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 tick. sorry, keyboards, like people are already pissed off. How dare you, how dare this come last in your ranking? It's a brilliant album. Yes, I know it's a brilliant album. So, yes, we'll get into that. But uh, there are other albums I happen to like more. So there's no denying that this is a brilliant album. To show you, this is the pointless slipcase cover. Really cool artwork. And on the actual disc, the, the, the version I got, they don't have the logo. But yeah, here we go. So this was, as I said, the debut album by Dissection. It was groundbreaking because it's what generated that term black and de blackened death metal which spawned a whole load of clones so you know taking influence of, from black metal and also melodic death metal and heavy metal it's just brilliant what i love about this album is that it's so uh melancholic and sorrowful it's got the raspy vocals and everything but like just some of these melodies which are so characteristic of the swedish bands they're just so mournful and sorrowful and um that's reflected in the lyrics so it really is a cohesive package uh of um you know music and ideas and everything it's just fantastic um now the reason why this comes third in the list like don't get me wrong i used to think this was my favorite because it was the one that i had heard the least but um uh, the reason why it comes in at number three for me is there just aren't as many standout tracks as the other albums so what i mean by that is musically the whole thing is brilliant but i would say for me this is more of a riff oriented album in the sense that for me, there's some parts of some songs, some moments, which are absolutely fantastic. And um, I just love. But on the other hand, I don't find like the, the tracks as a whole to be as memorable songs as the other albums. So certainly not a bad thing. Like you don't need to have like, oh, a whole song is consistently brilliant. But um, it just has some great moments and some great riffs, some great breakdowns. It's awesome with uh, John's raspy vocals. It invokes a very dark atmosphere. That's the other thing I forgot to mention, apart from the melody. This band is known for incorporating medieval scales into their music in guitar. Like, I'm no musician, but you can just tell in the sound, particularly on the acoustic tracks. So, um, yeah, a lot of atmosphere, a lot of melody, <laughs> melody, a lot of um, mourning, a lot of sorrow. It's just brilliant. So it makes sense with songs like A Land Forlorn, Mistress of the Bleeding Sorrow. It's really capturing that feel. Um, yeah, so no, again, no bad tracks on this, but just not a lot of standout ones for me. But ones which have absolutely melancholic fantastic moments for me are the title track the, the somber lane like that melancholic sorrowful riff in the middle it's just brilliant um 
also a land forlorn has a great um chugging mid pace riff like dun, dun, dun. and like you know the repetition it really brings out the atmosphere which is great um uh, in the Cold Winds of Nowhere has just got some brilliant licks, so many, many memorable hooks, and Dissection is a very hooky band for melodies and that kind of thing. Um, also, uh, yeah, Mistress of the Bleeding Sorrow. Yeah, they're all, all really good, actually. And then it ends with Feathers Fell, which is the acoustic track. By the way, on the demo version of that, they include some um, rattling snare drum effects on that song, which is really good. So, fantastic debut album. Absolutely groundbreaking, genre-forging dissection the somber lane all right so i'll just show you the booklet since this is a show and tell as well comes on this like rough paper which smells nice it's got all of the lyrics which are nice and readable pictures of the band and so on yeah very cool so this was like i said genre forging in the sense that it founded that that genre in my opinion of blackened death metal so, um, excellent debut album from this band, Dissection with the Somber Lane at number three. Oh, by the way, this also contains a bonus track with some demo versions, which are also on that other CD I showed you, as well as some live recordings. By the way, I have to say, the production on this album is excellent, but when you hear these songs perform live, it brings so much energy to them. So, great stuff. All right. Now, deal with this later, the booklet. Okay, so only two more albums so coming in at number two for me another con controversial decision perhaps this is rain chaos ah i'm sure people are horrified oh how can he choose this as number two okay long story short this is my understanding that a lot of people dislike this album or a lot of people even hate this album from what i've heard you know like people talking about it on youtube and online and everything um i think this, okay, so let's just do um, a timeline. So this one came out in 1993, the debut. This one came out in 2006. So Somber Lane was the first album. This was the third album. It came after a long hiatus because uh, John Nerdvite, the band leader, actually went to prison for eight years. He was an accomplice to murder, uh, responsible with someone else for killing someone. So he went to jail for eight years. And then this was the album that he released after that. He reformed Dissection with a completely new lineup because the pre-jail members were no longer in the band. So as a three-piece, and he wrote a lot of this music when he was in prison, I think, during his incarceration. And then they brought this album out just after he was released from prison. So uh, I think the reason a lot of people like it is because it marks a little bit of a stylistic shift in the sense that whereas the earlier stuff was uh, black death metal and with a strong black metal influence i think this one has, takes a lot more influence from melodic death metal particularly that gothenburg swedish scene like um i don't know bands like in flames even and um that's not necessarily a bad thing but it just leaned more towards the melodic death metal side than the black metal side and um i've heard a lot of people say about this album oh there's really dumbed down simplified riffs sort of like it's like new metal and new you know like corn limbus new metal black metal in the sense that the riffs are like chin 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 they're chugging like i just think it's a more refined approach so they've slowed down a bit definitely like a lot of the tracks are more mid pace but they still have that distinctive uh melodic uh black metal sound in my opinion as well as the death metal just some of the riffs are a bit chugging but i think this is a criminally underrated album so if you haven't heard this album don't be put off by what the haters say definitely check it out um, showing you the disc here. So what I like about this album much more than the Somberland is the fact that all of the songs are memorable on this. Like um, each, in, sorry, I'm just turning this around because it's got a weird back. But yeah, each song has its own identity and character. Each song stands out. Each song is memorable. So that's quite different to the Somberland where I was saying it's riff oriented and there's just certain moments which are really brilliant. But this one, like each and every song is fantastic. Like Nexion 218 is the um, opening track. Um, Beyond the Horizon, it starts off with a like sort of a chugging death metal riff, but um, just a brilliant breakdown in that song. Like when he says, so brilliant in your darkness, rushing forth the rage of chaos. Like that riff, it's simplistic, but it's just so driving and powerful, fantastic. By the way, the lyrics on this album are excellent, that you can actually hear what John is saying. And to me, they're just, so brilliantly scripted and they match the music so well the lyrics are just as much a highlight as the music and they're so nicely worded you know um, just it matches the music so well 
Um, then you've got Starless Eon, which is like got that, like an, another morning sorrowful uh, melody, and um, it's got this sort of uh, what what kind of chant like Enochian chant at the start. But that is a brilliant song, and um, again some just fantastic memorable lyrics in that. Um, then you've got Black Dragon, just such a great anthemic track, um, so, so so catchy, and I remember just um, really anthemic that particular song as well. Um, then you go into Dark Mother Divine. That's got some groovy riffs. I would say that's almost groove metal, but like um, not in a bad way, just this groovy melodic black metal riff, which is fantastic. And um, again, some brilliant lyrics, which just match the music. Like she is the, initi the initiator of dark dreams, Dark Mother Divine. She is Satan's mistress, Satan's mistress. Like it just ties in with the music so well, so fantastic. Then Zephyr I Set, just some oh, classic dissection riffs. like in the vein of Storm of the Light's Bane, like just fantastic stuff. And it even includes that lyric, which gives me the chills every time I hear it. He says, I am the murderer who refuses to submit. And uh, on that topic, actually, yeah, so he was, and I'm by no means glorifying it, but it's a bit chilling the fact that he was responsible for that and then included it in his lyrics. But um, he was part of, John and a couple of other members were part of the MLO, which is known as the, uh, otherwise known as the Misanthropic Luciferian Order, which was, uh, a Satanist sect which had some quite, I don't know, uh, primitive medieval ideas, concepts about Satanism, so that a lot of things were taken literally. That's why I'm no expert on this, but um, that's how the murder came about, I think, because they were looking for to step up sacrifices, so they decided to go for a human sacrifice. And again, I don't glorify that. It's actually quite dark and disturbing, but um, apparently that's how it came out. I don't know if I'm wrong, correct me, but... Uh, yeah, so just the fact that that lyric, again, I'm not glorifying it, but it's just chilling to hear it, but musically it's a brilliant song. Um, Chaos Phobia is a quick acoustic intermission, and then God of Forbidden, Forbidden Light is just another anthemic masterpiece. Like, the melody in that song, you know, like, Bless Our Souls, Mighty Father, so that we may see the lyrics again so good, but, like, just the uh, those melodic hooks which go with it, just so fantastic. And then they have the backing vocals which echo the chorus. It's just such an anthem. So God of Forbidden Light is a great song. Uh, now, Rain Chaos and Internal Fire. Like, Rain Chaos isn't... That's the title track. It doesn't stand out to me that much, but it's still a very good song. Um, just the others are more memorable. Then you've got Internal Fire, which has got a brilliant melodic guitar solo at the end. And then it finally ends with Maha Kali. That was released as a single prior to them bringing out this album. A lot of people hated that single, hate that song. I love it. What I like about it is it incorporates um, Middle Eastern and Indian musical influences like Maha Kali, so it's taking influence from like, Hindu, Indian religion. Um, but yeah, again, great, great uh, vocals and lyrics in that song and an acoustic section and just like these um, backing wailed, like Middle Eastern slash Indian kind of sounding vocals. It's fantastic. So. Excellent album. Um, like I said, I can understand why some people wouldn't like it, like Die Hard fans of Dissection, because it did mark a stylistic shift, but the fact was, it's still brilliant music, and it's not a total abandonment of what they were doing in the past. They just shifted the focus more to melodic death metal, I think. But um, brilliant stuff. I know some people might think it's not fast enough, but um, you know, to me, if it's got the melodies, it's got the hooks, and it's got so many other things, like the, the, the lyrics and the vocals, the lyrics are particularly brilliant, like I said, so don't be deterred by the haters. Rain Chaos is a great album, so this is my choice. Ranking for number two, Dissection Rain Chaos. All right, so just show you the disc. It's got that cool pattern, which is featured on the front. And, yep, cool booklet as well, with all of the lyrics nice and readable excellent artwork you can see this is a really cohesive package oh yeah and this is a photo of them uh, from the uh, rebirth of dissection tour so after john was released from prison they embarked upon a tour to indicate their comeback i'm lucky to say that i actually saw this tour um when i was traveling around europe in 2004 i met some friends from belgium and they played, so Dissection played a concert in Belgium. Then I think Enthroned opened. Sadly, I was too late to see that. I've never seen them live. I would have loved that. And then um, Watain, uh, then a very unknown Watain opened for this band. And I thought, Watain sounds really good. It reminds me of early Marduk, like Dark Endless 
Marduk at that time, and I was really blown away by them. They had all the pig's blood and everything, and then Dissection played. So this was the second last tour of Dissection because after they released this album, they did a short tour, and then John committed suicide uh, a couple of years later. So, yeah. And again, it comes on this rough paper, like the Somblane. I got this from a distro in Australia years ago. But I like this rough paper smell. There you see the band as a three-piece, so John being the only original member on this release. And then, of course, after this album, uh, the band disbanded because John, the band was the brainchild of John, basically. So anyway, great album, my number two, Rain Chaos. Okay, so if you're familiar with the discography of Dissection, the last one, it's no surprise, undoubtedly my favorite, coming in at number one, The Storm of the Light Bane. Okay. Okay, so I probably don't need to say anything that hasn't already been said about this album, but this is a black metal masterpiece, in my opinion, or black and death metal masterpiece, whatever you want to call it. Just so fantastic, and I think the reason why I like this is because, partly because there's a lot of nostalgic uh, value in it to me like when I was about 18 no 19 so 1998 yeah yeah I bought the Euronymous Nordic Metal tribute to Euronymous album and by that stage I had already been listening to black metal for a few years but I wasn't familiar with this band this band was featured on that compilation and then I discovered them more so it featured the song Where Dead Angels Live and also which was from this album and also their cover of Tormentor's Elizabeth Bathory which was fantastic then I just became obsessed with this band. Um, yeah, for me, undoubtedly the best. This is a melodic black metal masterpiece, whereas Rain Chaos focused more on the death metal aspect, this focuses more on the, the black metal aspect. The Somber Lane was quite a slow album as well, you know, um, but this one is where they really ramped up the speed. So this one came out in the middle, 1995. It was the band's second album. So you see, I've completely mixed up the chronology, not for the sake of it, that's just the order in which I like those albums. But um, yeah, it came out in 19, 1995. It was characterized by the fact that it was very fast and blasting, but of course it contained those infectious melodies and hooks. All of the songs are so memorable. Some of these melodies are just magic. Like they just give me the, the chills. It's like how ingenious is this band? Again, using a lot of medieval scales, like in the song, the song uh, from the single Where Dead Angels Lay, those medieval scales and melodies, they're just so hypnotic and they reel you in. It's fantastic. But um, yeah, no bad tracks on this. They open with At the Fathom Fathomless Depths, which is just sort of like a slow, dramatic intro before going into Night's Blood, which is fast and blasting. Great vocal, uh, great lyrics in that song, like I sold my soul cold as ice. And the music is cold as ice too, but then the melody in that chorus of Night's Blood it is just so good. I can't describe it. And if you're familiar with it, you know what I mean. Um, then also track three, Unhallowed, which is um, again, a lot of melodic hooks in that like this band is so quirky with the melodies like it's not brutal blasting black metal well it's fast but it's, it's always containing that melodic element which is what i love and then that that song contains a spoken word passage by it who was in abruptum yeah there was that line in it where he says will be the blade of their damnation it's just brilliant then where dead angels lie which was the single from this album. They released an EP, just fantastic, filled with medieval scales, great melodies. Again, brilliant lyrics. Sorry, battery there. Again, brilliant lyrics for that song. Um, it's just so cold as, um, you know, like they even talk about the angel lying dead on the snow, blood staining in the snow. Just such a, a cold concept. It's really, really good. Um, then Storm of the Lights Bane, another fast blasting one, but like with a lot of melody and a great memorable chorus. You know, I have come to challenge your ways. Lights Bane, Lights Bane, the last of your day. Brilliant. And now my absolute favorite track on the album is the one that comes after that. That is Thorns of Crimson Death. That is just so uh, anthemic and melodic. And um, just the chorus is so epic as well. You know, hear the choirs, was it the wind that brought back their cries? Something with blood and tragedy. Yeah, but like, it's so good. And it, it really is a melancholic, sorrowful anthem. I love that song. Criminally underrated, Thorns of Crimson Death. It also features some backing vocals from Legion, from Marduk, who was only 20 at the time, already singing for Ophthalmia, I think, before he joined Marduk. So, um, yeah, that's brilliant. And then you've also got Soul Reaper. Yes, how could I forget? And again, just another fast... Uh, 
fast melodic song in that and like um great lyrics once again you know starting with whale oh desolate gale you know that bleak atmosphere which is brought to it so this album is melodic fast bleak cold just spectacular like uh, i think albums as legendary as this are just once in a blue moon i don't think they'll there'll be be any albums as good as or very few at least as that will match this it is just a stone cold black metal classic so if you're not familiar with this album i would strongly recommend you check this out it is absolutely essential and i don't think i'm exaggerating so yeah for me coming in at number one my favorite dissection album of all time storm of the light bane 10 out of 10 all right so just show you the disc here and all of the lyrics, pretty um, basic booklet, but at least the lyrics are readable. That dissection logo, and by the way, fantastic artwork. You're probably aware I do have the t-shirt of this, but I wasn't gonna wear it today because it might give away the ranking. So, stuck with the old Immortal. By the way, another classic album. All right, guys, so there we go. Coming in at number one, Dissection, Storm of the Lights, Bane. All right, so there we go. That concludes the ranking, three albums plus the demo CD. Tell me, what do you think of my ranking? What's your favorite dissection album? What, what do you, are there any albums that you dislike by dissection? Some people say, uh, some people say Rain Chaos, but um, then again, it's all up to the eye of the beholder. I have a friend who I introduced Rain Chaos to. He was, he only liked death metal and he used to always say, oh, black metal, how can you listen to that shit? I don't like it. But then I played him Rain Chaos. He loves that album and he doesn't think much of the other album. So it just goes to show it's all a matter of opinion. There's no right or wrong. It comes down to what we like. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the ranking. Uh, and um, let me know your thoughts in the comments about this video, about the band, anything you like. All right, so I'll be back again soon with another video. That's going to be a thread response and that'll be a surprise. So I'll keep you posted later on. All right, so thanks a lot. In the meantime, guys, thanks very much for your support. Since during the competition, my number of subscribers has exceeded 300. Thank you very much to everyone for watching the channel, for continuing to support it. And I hope you continue to watch. So in the meantime, take care and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.